In everything we've done so far, we've assumed that each firm is a small part of a perfectly competitive market, which means that each firm has no market power. By market power we mean the power to set price, but in the perfectly competitive market, the price is set in the market through the intersection of demand and supply, and then each firm takes that price as given, knowing it can sell any quantity it could feasibly produce at that market price. So when we think about what the demand curve for a firm looks like, it's perfectly elastic. It knows it can sell any quantity it wants at that market price. So even though the market demand curve is downward sloping, the firm's demand curve is perfectly horizontal. If it tries to raise the price, it'll sell zero because everybody's going to go to the competitors. And there's no reason to lower the price because you can sell anything that you want at the market price. As a result, the marginal revenue of producing one more unit for a perfectly competitive firm is just equal to the price. Each time you produce an additional unit, your total revenue increases by the price you sell that unit for. And that's the marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue curve is equal to the firm's demand curve. Now what about a firm with market power? Market power means you can control the price, at least to some extent. But you can't do that if you have a perfectly elastic demand curve. You must have a downward sloping demand curve for your firm. So market power implies that the demand curve the firm faces is downward sloping. And to keep things as simple as possible, let's suppose that downward sloping demand curve for the firm is just a straight line. So now this is the demand curve for an individual firm. And we can now ask, well, what would the marginal revenue look like for this kind of firm? And at first we might be tempted to say, well, since it's equal to the demand curve for a perfectly competitive firm, that's probably true in this case as well. But that turns out not to be true. Because what's different about a firm with market power is that when that firm decides to produce more, it has to lower the price on all the goods that it sells. So its marginal revenue is not the price it collects on the next good, because we have to subtract from that the revenue it loses on the previous goods when it has to lower its price. So imagine, for example, that initially the firm is operating with a high price, selling a low quantity. We can see the total revenue in that picture. It's just price times quantity, and so we get this total revenue box. Now suppose the firm lowers its price and increases the quantity it produces. So it moves down its demand curve, and we get a new total revenue box, price times quantity. We can see that that new total revenue box has an additional area here. You're producing goods you haven't produced before, so you're getting that total revenue increase from those additional units. But you're also losing some revenue from the units you used to produce. You're now selling these initial units at a lower price, and so you're losing revenue on those goods. Now, in this picture, the blue area is clearly smaller than the magenta area. So the increase in total revenue from producing more is larger than the decrease in total revenue from having to lower your price. So here, by producing more, we saw an increase in total revenue. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue we get from producing one more unit of output. So if, when we produce an additional unit, the total revenue goes up, that means the marginal revenue is positive, it's greater than zero. Our total revenue goes up as we produce more. But now imagine that you were on this lower part of the demand curve. So you have a low price and a high quantity that you're producing. And now imagine that you're producing a little bit more. When you produce more, you have to lower the price. As you lower that price, you can sell more. And again, we get some additional revenue from the additional units that we're producing, 
but that additional revenue box is now small. And we lose some revenue from the blue total revenue box to the magenta one because we had to lower the price on all the previous units. So we lose revenue here. Now the revenue area that we lose is bigger than the revenue area that we gain. So when we are on this lower part of the demand curve, an increase in output leads to a decrease in total revenue. Marginal revenue is the additional revenue we re earn by producing one more unit of output. Well here, when we produce an additional unit of output, total revenue decreases. So that means the additional revenue is actually negative. So when we're on this lower part of the demand curve, marginal revenue is less than zero because total revenue falls as we produce more. So if it's true that on the higher part of the demand curve, marginal revenue is positive, and on the lower part of the demand curve, it's negative, it has to be true that somewhere it's zero. And the place where it's going to be zero is that point on the demand curve where total revenue is the largest it can possibly be. So that either way we go, total revenue is going to fall. Where would that be? So let's redraw this demand curve. And it turns out, as a pure matter of geometry, that total revenue box is going to be biggest at the midpoint of the demand curve. Now you can convince yourself of that by starting at a price just above that midpoint and drawing your total revenue box. Price times quantity. And then imagine we lower the price to just below the midpoint. and we get our new total revenue box, price times quantity. This time, the additional revenue we get from producing more units is exactly equal to the revenue we lost by lowering the price on all the previous units. So at the midpoint, or around the midpoint, an increase in output, if you start just above the midpoint and you produce an additional unit, an increase in output is going to result in no change in total revenue. So if total revenue remains the same as we produce an additional unit, then the additional revenue is zero. So that at that point, the marginal revenue is equal to zero. So now we can put together what we've seen in these graphs to try and figure out what the marginal revenue curve looks like for a firm with market power that has a downward sloping demand curve. So let's redraw that downward sloping demand curve again. With the midpoint, where we know that at that midpoint, the marginal revenue is zero. So if we put the marginal revenue in for that midpoint of the demand curve, marginal revenue is zero. Now, where does the marginal revenue begin? So you can ask yourself for the very first unit that you produce. If you are only going to produce one unit, you go from producing zero to one. What's your increase in total revenue? Well, you're going to be able to sell that first unit at the price that this person is willing to pay. The person who is at the very top of the demand curve. So the marginal revenue of that very first unit, if you're only going to produce one unit, is exactly equal to the price that the first person is willing to pay. So that's the marginal revenue for the first unit. If you produce a second unit, you have to lower the price in order to sell that second unit. So you're going to gain additional revenue from producing two rather than one units, but you're going to lose some revenue because you had to lower the price for that very first person. Now it turns out that the marginal revenue curve is in fact a straight line. So now that we have two points on the marginal revenue curve, we can connect those points, and that's going to be the marginal revenue curve. The marginal revenue curve has the same intercept as the demand curve, but twice the slope, so it intersects at half the distance of where the demand curve intersects. We can see that when we're above the midpoint, 
the marginal revenue lies above the horizontal axis. In other words, up here, the marginal revenue is greater than zero. That's because when you're up here, you can produce an additional unit that's going to increase total revenue, which means your marginal revenue is greater than zero. But once we're below the midpoint, we saw that an increase in output will lead to a decrease in total revenue, which means marginal revenue is less than zero. So here, marginal revenue is less than zero, which we can see because we're below the horizontal axis. Marginal revenue is actually negative. Now, it turns out that this is one case where calculus is really helpful. And so if you're even slightly familiar with single variable calculus, we can very quickly prove that that, in fact, has to be the shape of the marginal revenue curve if we have a linear downward sloping demand curve. So the demand curve in this case is linear. And you remember the equation of a line. Y is equal to B plus MX, where B is the intercept and M is the slope. Well, in this case, our y, y variable is P, the price. So to have a linear downward sloping demand curve, we can write it as P is equal to some intercept, B, minus, because we have a downward slope, the slope term times x. So that's just the equation of a line, the equation of this demand curve for the firm. We can also find the equation for total revenue. Total revenue is just price times quantity. That's how we get these total revenue boxes. But now we have an equation for price. We know for any output level what price you can actually charge given the demand curve for your firm. So we can replace that price term with this equation to get um, B minus MX times X. And we can multiply that through and get BX minus MX squared. The marginal revenue is how much total revenue changes as you produce additional output. And that's the derivative of total revenue with respect to output. So we can take a simple derivative of this equation. If you remember how to take derivatives, what we're going to get is B, because when we take the derivative of that first term, we take the exponent out front, the exponent is just 1, and then we subtract that exponent from what it was before, so 1 minus 1 is 0, which makes the x go away. Then we take the derivative of the second term, and we get minus 2, move the exponents up front, times m x, subtract 1 from the exponent, so we're just left with a 1. Now notice what we see. We see an equation for the marginal revenue curve that has the same intercept as the demand curve. So here we have the same intercept, which is exactly what our intuition told us. But we have twice the slope. So we have a marginal revenue curve that's twice as steep, which therefore intersects at half the distance just below the midpoint, where we've concluded that there the marginal revenue is equal to zero. So now we have an idea of mar marginal revenue looks like for a firm with market power. It's not equal to the demand curve, as it was for a perfectly competitive firm. Rather, it starts at the same intercept and has twice the slope when the demand curve is linear and downward sloping.